Welcome to a new daily top ask Reddit video. Today's topic. What's your all-time favorite video game? The Elder Scrolls IV, Oblivion. For all its flaws, for all its annoyance, it was a game I played before open world was normal, and in that time and place, it was an incredible experience. Started playing Oblivion at a time when I was going through a rough patch in my childhood and I was completely lost in fantasy land for 8 to 12 hours per day. Including socializing with NPCs. I mean like, actually talking to them. Man that was a sad period but I needed it and this game got me through. Its predecessor Morrowid for me for the same reason. Morrowid was groundbreaking. It was so huge, the most realistic graphics of the time, and a storyline you can either follow or just explore without the game even caring for the most part. Seriously I don't think people realize how amazing it was for gamers who were looking for something like it but never really getting that experience exactly yet. I loved the dark, weird aesthetic of Morrowid, and even though it was an earlier game, in many ways it was more open. I mean, you could fly. Roller Coaster Tycoon It's one of those few games that I can be playing and get so immersed into it, I can play it half the day and not even realize it. They ported it to mobile and it's fantastic. None of the money-grabbing bullshit that all other mobile games have. Edit, the app is Roller Coaster Tycoon Classic by Atari, at least in the Google Play Store. Cabal Space Program Addictive, once you climb over the wall. Well, more like once you sail over the wall spinning uncontrollably shedding parts and boosters. You get the idea. Came to say this. Never been a FPS or hand forward slash I coordination core games. The planning forward slash failure and rescue mission loop kept me playing for hours. Your first Mew landing was the best video game experience ever. A little worried about KSP2 however. Why are you worried? They seem to be taking their time and provide plenty of updates on their YouTube channel. Star Wars, Knights of the Old Republic. I have been playing the game for 16 years and still love every minute of it. Remake is coming. Prepared to have like 15 different play through the first 6 weeks. Portal 2. Well here we are again. It's always such a pleasure. Remember how you tried to kill me twice? How have you been? Because I'm a potato. Oh good, my slow clap processor made it into this thing. Subautica. Your first playthrough in this game is unforgettable. Oh and the Ost is magificiet. I made it through the whole game without ever looking up a guide or wiki and I'm so glad that I did. Sometimes all you could do was continue exploring deeper and deeper into the black depths and hope that something was there, and every single time it rewarded you. Well actually sometimes you would be decimated by a horrifying deep sea monster but most of the time it was rewarding lol. Detecting multiple leviathan class life forms. Are you sure what you're doing is worth it? I know it gets posted every time in this thread but Hoa Einstein's IG's hearing that for the first time while being way out in the black is one of the most spine chilling moments. I don't see it mentioned very often but Little Big Planet. It's super fun to play with other people, especially that boom town level in the first game, the music is primarily kooky and upbeat and well selected, and Sackboy was a really cute character idea. This is definitely one of the best games ever IMO. I feel like so many people forgot about its existence and it hurts me lol. LBP2 was the only game my mom ever pre-ordered for us instead of buying used because growing up my brothers and I pretty much only all got along when we were playing it together. I have so many great memories with them playing both the first and second game, especially playing other people's levels. We definitely haven't forgotten about it, and still play it from time to time when we see each other for holidays. Stardew Valley Most relaxing game in my opinion that still never fails to suck me in every single time I turn it on. Being made, mostly, by one person and seeing how that game turned out, you can tell this game means a lot to him. The time and effort put towards not only the original release, but also the added content that followed were just absolutely amazing in every way. Excited for his next game. I have heard about Stardew Valley for years and just got around to purchasing it two weeks ago I'm completely addicted. The first week I put in more hours to SV than my actual job it is such an incredible game and you can tell so much love went into it. Outer Wilds. Not Outer Worlds. Wilds. I love that game, the music and atmosphere make me feel things that I normally bury deep down. 
Unfortunately I'm an idiot and I've been stuck for a while and haven't been able to complete it, but I refuse to look up any hints because I know figuring it out and experiencing it for yourself is what makes it special. There's a Discord that will help you spoiler free. I used it and they were perfect. You can find it on the r forward slash outer wilds sub. This is one of those games that isn't really a game, it's an experience. There's very few games that have this accolade, of being a journey. The game journey is also a journey rather than a game. Bioshock. Something about that world just holds a weird place in my heart, partly nostalgia for one of the last times I still held that childhood awe and wonder for games, but also because it just holds up really well. The music, the atmosphere, the story, the gameplay. I've spent more hours in Rapture and Columbia than I thought possible for games that take around 8 to 12 hours to beat. I think a defining factor for me when it comes to enjoying a game, is if I just love being in the world, just walking around soaking in the atmosphere. The MG's games are also like that for me. Would you kindly explain why? Best twist for my young brain when that came out. Think that was the moment it made it into my own video game hall of fame. Fallout, New Vegas. They asked me how well I understood theoretical physics. I said I had a theoretical degree in physics. They said welcome aboard. I do not enjoy killing, but when done righteously, it is just a chore, like any other. Practiced hands make for short work, and the good lord knows there is much to be done here. Furiously reloading a table full of 45 pistols. Yes. Who won the lottery? I did. You I belie me. RuneScape. Growing up my life wasn't very good, but when I logged into RuneScape all the bad things going on just didn't exist. Same, somehow the monotonous grind helped me quiet my mind. Super Mario Bros. 3. Absolutely perfect game if you ask me. SMB3 and Super Mario World for sure. I am partial to the latter one because our family never owned an NES, only NCs. But, SM3 was groundbreaking, and as an adult I went back and bought an NES so I could play it. It seems stupid but... Mario Kart Wii I. There's a lot of things I hate about it, but everything I love about it basically washes the bad stuff out like it was never there. Edit, from the comments, I can tell that it's not stupid. Not stupid at all. That game is pure unadulterated fun. Crew Trigger. It was a life changer. Crew Trigger was not released in Europe at all in its original CIS version. Worst crime against humanity ever. Mass Effect 2. The story, the characters, the writing, the gameplay improvements. All of it. Also Garrus. Very much Garrus. I've played Mass Effect so many times over the years and it never gets old. There's no Shepherd without Varkaria. I've always head KO'd that when you recruit Garrus in Me Too. That night he and Shepard get drunk and strut around the Normandy blasting the boys are back in town by Thin Lizzy on the loudspeaker. Zelda Ocarina of Time for N-64. Removed. This was one of my first video games and I have great memories of having friends over for LAN parties, setting a kitchen timer for our truce sometimes so we could build huge cities and throw armies at each other. I'm also convinced the campaigns helped me pass history class, as my classmates and teacher were shocked when I knew the entire story of Barbarossa, William Wallace, Attila the Hun, and more all off the top of my head lol. I've kept up with the expansion, the HD re-release, and now the definitive edition. It's also the only video game I ever remember my dad playing, he was incredible and I've only beaten him once ever. So 100% this. Wulololo. Roses are red. Wulololo. Roses are blue. Command and Conquer, Red Alert. The Witcher 3, it just felt magical to me. Edit, this is my most awarded forward slash upvoted comment, just so glad so many people share the love for The Witcher 3. On my second proper playthrough with DLCS and as many side quests as possible. I've already crossed 222 hours of gameplay and I dread finishing it. It's become a part of my lifestyle now lol. An unforgettable game for sure. I've probably played the Heart of Stone DLC more than I actually played the main game, so good, D. GTA San Andreas. Nothing was better than hopping off the bus after school to play. Baldia's Gate series on the PC is so damn good. 
I've been playing them for 20 plus years and still discover new things every time I reboot it. Thoughts on BG3 Cautiously excited Divinity Original Sin 1 and 2 were great, but I'm not sure if they'll be able to capture that same feel and scope to the world that's in the BG games. I've already bought it though and I'm waiting for them to finish it before I dive in. If I'm being honest the most genuine fun I've had playing a game was Guitar Hero. Me and my brothers would play for hours. In a similar vein, Rock Band. I still play from time to time, and despite new controllers being unavailable, they're still releasing weekly DLC and if you've got old instruments, you can play on the PS4 or XB1. Nothing quite like getting a whole band together to belt out some tunes on a Friday night. Getting drunk with my friends, before we all settled down with our wives and families, and playing rock band for hours in our crappy townhouse was a time in my life I look back very fondly on. Now I see those guys maybe once or twice a year, and we have to plan the hangouts months in advance, 